Tacos de Canasta, these are going to be your new favorites. Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, our next page in this taco manual takes you to a place that is something you may not have seen before, but I'm really excited about. It's got this cult following in Mexico and I can't wait to share it with you. They're ta called Tacos de Canasta or Basket Tacos. And let me just set the stage for you. When you're going around Mexico City especially, you will find these vendors on street corners and oftentimes they're on bicycles and on the back of the bike they will have a large basket. And they are selling these tacos de canasta, which are sort of small, less about the filling and more about this sort of magical experience of the filling melding with the tortilla. I'll show you how you put that all together. And I'll show you the way that you could do it at your house without the big basket and making thousands of them, which the street vendors do every day. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is to make an oil that is flavored. This is an essential part of the making of tacos de canasta. So I've got a small pan here over a um, sort of medium low heat right now, and I'm gonna pour in some oil oil. A lot of the street vendors will use a really beautiful fresh rendered pork lard for this. You may want to go that direction. We're going to season it with the guajillo chilies here. So the first thing that you have to do when you're working with any of the dried chilies is to pull off the stem end of it and then let the seeds fall out after you tear it open like that. And um, let you, you don't have to get every one of the seeds out of it, but you want to get most of them away from them here. And then we're going to tear them into pieces that are smaller, but we are not going to be very meticulous about that. A, a couple inches pieces like that and throw them right into the oil here. The next thing that's going to go into the oil will be some garlic. Now I've had this pan over this low heat for a little while. So that oil heated up really, really fast. Um, I'm going to get rid of all of the seeds and stems here into my compost bowl and uh, cut the garlic in half. Um, it'll just cook in the right amount of time here. And we're going to add one teaspoon now of salt. This would be a measured amount here. And sprinkle that in to season this oil. And in, I'm going to say two to three minutes, you will smell those guajillo chilies toasting and you will see that the garlic has turned a nice beautiful golden color. And then we're going to blend all of this so that we have a flavored oil. So this hot oil with the salt and garlic and guajillo chilies goes into the blender jar. You obviously have to make sure that you have a heat proof blender jar. Um, I'm putting the top on here, but you've noticed that I've taken the cinder piece out of it. All blenders have that so that if you're ever going to blend any hot substance, you take that out. Otherwise, pressure will build up inside there and blow the top off. I've done that more than once in my life. Okay, so I'm putting a damp cloth over the top to catch any kind of spatters here. Turn it on, turning it on low to start with until it starts to get mixed up in there. And then I'm gonna blend it completely smooth or as smooth as I can get those guajillo chilies. All right, we are going to strain this oil now. Um, so I got to take the top, but you can see it's still all very hot there. Pour it through just a medium mesh strainer, not one of those super fine ones. This is to get out any pieces of the guajillo chili that didn't get blended thoroughly. And just shake it through. There's about a tablespoon or so 
of dregs there. And there we've got our beautiful flavored and colored oil. Okay, so we have tested many different ways of making these tacos de canasta here in the United States. And our best effort was to start with fresh factory made tortillas, not homemade tortillas for this. Preferably ones from a local factory so that you know that they're really fresh. The ones in Chicago um, that come in paper are the ones from the local tortilla factories. Now this next step might seem a little odd to you, but this is what creates that beautiful texture in the tacos de canasta. I am going to, with a brush here, start bathing these tortillas in this flavored oil. And I'm going to do it on both sides of the tortilla and it'll seem like you're putting on too much but this oil absorbs during the steaming process and it it just transforms the texture of the tortilla into something that is really really special so I'm going to keep going with all of these until I, so I've got 36 of these tortillas here. I'm going to keep going with all of this until I've got one pack done. Then I'm going to slide these into a plastic bag. I'll show you that in just a second. And they're ready for microwaving to steam them into suppleness. Okay, I've gotten through all three packages now of the tortillas, used up all the oil. I'm just using these quart size uh, bags here. You're not going to seal the bag. You're just going to slide these tortillas in here. If you seal the bag, then they'll just balloon up when you start the heating process, which we're going to do in the microwave. I just fold them over like that. I've got my three bags there, so clean this up. Now I'm going to build our canasta, our big basket, but I'm going to use the slow cooker. So I have replaced my blender with the slow cooker here. I've turned it on low, but once you get this whole process going, you have to work quickly to build this whole thing. And then we're going to let them steam here for half an hour. Okay. So I'm going to take one package of the tortillas. I'm going to put it into the microwave for two minutes, okay? And that timing is important. While that is heating there, I'm going to build our canasta now. In the street vendors, they have their big basket. The first thing they do is usually put a big tablecloth because they're working with really big baskets. Here, I'm going to choose to use napkins instead. So I'm going to line this with two napkins because that's what it'll take to fill this all up. This is a great thing to do if you're going to have a whole bunch of people over and you want a sort of snacky meal, if you will, because these are more snacky than a lot of tacos are. So that's all there. Now, the next thing that the vendors do after they put that big tablecloth in there is line it usually with like a garbage bag, okay? Because that's going to really help to insulate it. So for this, because of the fact that they sell these liners for the slow cookers, I'm using the one here, the Reynolds version of it. Um, I'm going to just put this in here and fit it ne neatly there. You obviously want the top to stay open because that will is where we're going to put the tacos in. And then the third thing that most of the street vendors do is to put this like craft paper, what's called papel de straza. They'll put that in there. We don't need that because the way that they add uh, oil to it, they need something to absorb excess oil. But we have very controlled oil because of the way that we put it on the tortillas there. Okay, so next thing we have to talk about is fillings. You're going to need about seven cups of filling and lots of different things are used for this. 
I'm going to include in this recipe a couple of very simple ones. Ones for beans, a sort of spicy bean mix, and one for potatoes. Very classic in Mexico to have the potatoes cooked with a little bit of chorizo or what is um, called chicharrón prensado in Mexico. Um, a lot of times people will do a little bit of chicken with cooked down mole, so it's kind of a thick, almost pasty thing. Now, I have heard the microwave go off here. That was two minutes there. I'm gonna let those sit for a full two minutes before we start to make these little tacos de canasta. Okay, two minutes has passed now. Take those hot tortillas there, put another package in here, set the microwave for two minutes. And now we're ready to build this thing. I'm gonna take a small amount of onion to put on the bottom. This keeps the, um, the little tacos that are at the very bottom off of the bottom, but also it gives some flavor. You'll notice that it really does work very nicely. Then I'm going to take my hot tortillas out of here and I'm gonna to start to form these guys, okay? So it's not too much filling that goes in here. Uh, we're gonna fold them over like that. And then we are going to start making our layers here. So I have this hot potato filling and the hot bean filling, and I have some hot chicken with mole. And I'm just gonna keep making these layers of tacos de canasta until I'm all finished. Eating packets of the tortillas one by one. Okay, now we are finishing off with the chicken in mole ones. I'm gonna take a, a few of the last onions to sprinkle over the top of it here. Wipe off my hands that are sort of messy with this whole thing. And then we're gonna close up our canasta, our big basket that we've made here in the slow cooker. And fold over the napkins that we have here and we're gonna let this steam, everything steam together for that magical transformation of the filling with those tortillas that are, they're so imbued with that wonderful flavor of the garlic and the guajillo chilies, a little bit of salt in there, and the whole thing just becomes another thing. 30 minutes. You can let them go to an hour, but I would always recommend serving them right at about 30 minutes. I'll meet you back here when they're ready. Okay, the moment has come. It's been about a half an hour, so let's unwrap this package here and see where we are. So the tortillas seemed a little shiny when we were making these. Now they don't seem shiny at all. That transformation has happened to the, to the beautiful tortilla with the filling in it in this sort of steamy environment. So I'm gonna take three of these guys and put them on a plate here. Like I said, you eat more of these tacos than you do other kinds of tacos because they are, they're more snacky. They don't have a huge amount of filling in them, but you always wanna have salsa to go with them. I'm gonna put a little bit of this roasted tomatillo and uh, avocado salsa there. And then some of the pickled jalapenos. I think th that's a perfect garnish to go over the top of these guys here. And there you have it. Something you may never have heard of before, but I'll tell you, <laughs> your friends are gonna love these.